All right, I just can't stress, you know, the challenge to our society and importance today. Ray talked about really an important issue before income inequality. In my own opinion, partly today, we're in it with a knowledge society that is built into it from that standpoint. But if we look at uh, actual assumptions in Japan today, uh, the largest fund in the world, the Japanese pension fund, has about 1.85. That's their goal. For all of Japan today, it's a little over two and a quarter. If you wanted to buy an annuity in Japan today, you get 25 basis points. So you could double your money in 280 years. Uh, if you come to Canada, it's in the fours, four to four and a half percent. And if you come to the United States today, it's still weighted average somewhere between seven and eight percent of the expectations. If you look at swapping in to dollars today, it's about 160, 180 basis points. So if you tack that on uh, in, in yen, you're at about four, four and a half, similar to Canada. Yet what we see are these dramatic unfunded pension funds, the challenges to meet them, the promises made, a company like GE, dramatic change here with $60 billion unfunded pension at a seven or seven plus percent actuarial assumption uh, that they are dealing with and imagining what that unfunded pension fund would be. So how to generate these rates of return? Ray, since this is gonna affect society so significantly, particularly in the United States and Western Europe and other places, uh, what advice do you have for us on this area? Well, f first of all, um, those returns could not be generated. They, they will not be generated because there's only beta and alpha. And if you look at the what is priced into beta, in other words, there's cash yields, the bond yields, and then you carry that forward in terms of expected returns of equities, or if you look at private equity, what their returns are and so on, ain't nothing that is going to have that kind of return from a beta point of view, and then alpha zero sum. So we're not gonna have that those returns for all those people, uh, those entities. So, and if, so what we know I, for Are our society- Are you telling me, even if I give my money to Bridgewater, <laughs> okay, uh, uh, cut uh, all my expenses, I'm, uh, uh, I'm not gonna achieve yes, that? Uh, um, yeah, you will not um, achieve um, that. Yeah, certainly by <laughs> active. Um, uh, I, I, if I was to say, uh, I don't, um, I'll answer your question literally from an engineering point of view. Um, if you have an asset, a balanced portfolio of assets and the return of those assets, let's say is a 5% return or a three year 4% return depending, it very much depends on what the return of cash is to think about whether that um, leverage return would produce a, a return that's higher than that. It's certainly the case that um, engineering for that is um, an exercise that is the only path out and, and, and there may not be a path out. Uh, the issue from most of those returns though is that um, those returns won't be met and to, to get back to your question, it also won't be met in terms of uh, health care obligations. So that if you take the total amount of obligations for our society that is in the form of debt, um, pension obligations, and health care obligations, it is certainly the case that those obligations can't be met. Um, and that doesn't mean that we're going to have a debt crisis like in, when 2000. Eight, we anticipated the debt crisis. We went through the pro forma financials. It was not. Uh, it was clear that the, there was going to be not enough money to pay off those debts. In this case, when we do through the calculations, we don't have a debt crisis, but we have an emerging squeeze, and so those are the promises that um, means that there'll be compromises in pension. Um, what's delivered. There'll be compromises in those things. And when that happens in an economy where we have essentially two economies, and you look at the bottom 60% of that economy, that's a, I believe, a social pressure that's going to be an important social and economic pressure. That it's a pressure of our time. So that's why I believe that that, um, 
that the combination of those obligations not being able to be met is a social pressure. And then I think then there's the exercise of what does a realistic, um, how do they engineer for that? It becomes a cash flow issue, not just a theoretical issue. When there's enough money around to uh, top up the pension fund, fine. When you have a situation where you're actually having to sell off assets in order to make the funding, and the portfolio of your assets shrinks, those actuary return numbers that you need are rise because of that phenomenon. We're about to enter that period where the cash flow needs are going to have to come out. I mean, it's going to be such a burden, too much of a burden, or the pension obligations are not going to be met, or you're going to have the cash flow problem that I'm talking about in terms of the need for the actuarial assumptions to rise. So it's an engineering problem that's particularly true because the obligations are large and because the expected return of asset classes is going to be low. So yeah, it's going to be a social and political issue as well as a market issue for our time, for the next generation, I believe.